Today we're talking about Sloan flashometers. So let's talk about the basic anatomy of a Sloan flashometer. You have your supply flange. So this is where water actually comes into the water closet or urinal. Your control stop valve. If you unscrew that chrome cap, there's a, a, a flathead screw in there that will allow you to turn the water off and on to the flush valve. So when you need to perform a repair, replacement of any parts, that's where you can turn the water off to the unit. Uh, you got your stop coupling, your diaphragm cover that unscrews, your valve body, your handle assembly, your outlet coupling, and your vacuum breaker assembly your spud coupling, and your spud flange. Remember the spud is a connection between the water closet and the flashometer or the, the urinal and the flashometer. So let's talk about common symptoms and repair parts. So this is not an all-inclusive list, but sort of the common symptoms that you may experience. Uh, the water won't shut off after flushing. It continues to run. Uh, the water won't flush at all. So you pull the handle, push the handle, nothing happens. Or you get a really weak flush that doesn't clear the bowl or the urinal. Uh, the flush is too fast or, you know, too short where you push the handle and it, again, it doesn't clear the bowl properly, etc. Uh, or it leaks water at one of the joints. Or it makes odd noises when you push the flush handle. Or water splashes out of the bowl or urinal. You know, they're suggesting there's too much water pressure, for example. So let's look at this cutaway view of a flushometer. You know, at the top, you have your diaphragm assembly. So you got your outer cover, and then you have that plastic black inner cover or inside cover, and that's what covers your diaphragm assembly. And then you see you have your control stop and the internal parts for that control stop, and you can buy repair kits for those. And there's that flat head screw I was telling you about that you can uh, open and close the control stop valve. You have your handle assembly and they offer handle repair kits and you have your vacuum breaker and they offer vacuum breaker repair kits and then your coupling assemblies and keep in mind all of your couplers are mechanical connections they all have little gaskets that actually make the connection they're straight thread they're not tapered pipe thread for example the only threads that are tapered pipe thread would be these threads on the back of the uh, con control stop valve where it threads on to the pipe nipple in the wall. So again, you can buy all these repair kits, do a Google search. They're relatively easy to find. Make sure you get the correct part number for your unit. And just a quick disclaimer, at the time of this recording, this video is not a paid promotion for any product that you see on this video. So common tools needed to work on these flashometers. Now you can use these channel locks with the smooth jaws. Don't use the, the jaws that are serrated or have teeth because you're gonna damage the chrome finish on the flashometer parts. And just a word of caution, these channel locks may deform components. So when you squeeze down on those handles on the channel locks, it may bend or, or create, create uh, you know, it might pinch the threads on one of the couplings, causing it to be harder to tighten or loosen. So just keep that in mind. Um, a better option would be to use an offset pipe wrench with, again, with smooth jaws. 
or you can use one of these adjustable spud wrenches or one of these Sloan A50 super wrenches and the price on these range anywhere I've seen from you know on eBay from 15 to 20 dollars all the way up to around 50 dollars again depending on where you buy these from and of course you'll need a slotted flathead screwdriver uh, especially to turn the water off and on at that that stop valve. Some important notes. It's a good idea when you replace the diaphragm assembly, replace the inner cover at the same time because they both wear together. So you want to replace both at the same time. Wow. Uh, no pipe dope or Teflon tape on any of the connections except the female national pipe threads on the control stop valve inlet. Uh, don't over tighten any of the connections. So if, if one of your connections are leaking, chances are it probably needs a new gasket or there's something that needs to be replaced inside there. I know a lot of times technicians will think, oh, I'll just snug it up with my wrench and, and it'd be good. You might get away with that once or twice, but you may also cause damage by doing that. Uh, and don't use a urinal diaphragm repair kit in a water closet or vice versa. Uh, use the properly rated relief valves. So the relief valves are color coded. Uh, some are designed to work in a water closet and a urinal, but some are only rated for water closets and only rated for urinals. And there's different GPF ratings for those relief valves. So you'll see green ones, black, white, etc. Make sure you get the proper relief valve for your water closet or urinal. And you can use 100% silicone, you know, plumber's lube on some of the rubber components. Like if you're going to repair the, the flush valve handle assembly, uh, that rubber, you can put a little tiny bit of the 100% silicone on there. But don't use something else because it could deteriorate that rubber. So it really needs to be that 100% silicone plumber's lube. And keep in mind, building conditions will affect flush characteristics. So what's the water pressure in your building? What's your pipe size? Is it a long pipe run or short pipe run supplying your flushometer? Number of fixtures. Is it a bathroom with two fixtures or 20 fixtures? Uh, number of floors in the building. Is this a three-floor building or a 30-story building? And, of course, usage. You know, during high periods of usage, that may have flush, uh, excuse me, may affect the flush characteristics. Sensor-activated flushometers. So you may also have these or want to upgrade to these in your facility. They have the hands-free uh, so there's a little battery. There's a battery pack in there. There's also a manual push button if the battery fails. Um, and then there's and they have a sensor. And then they have the side mount uh, flushometer with the sensor. And again, a manual push button. And then on the right hand side, you see there's a flushometer that has electronic solenoid valve. And then the wall mounted uh, sensor. And they also make dual flush. Uh, upgrade kits. So for a water closet, you know, the there's one button for liquids and then a second button for a full flush for solids. I hope this information helps you. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching.